Good evening. So my name is Alok Kumar. And before I introduce myself, I would like to introduce Department of Training, Learning and Development of the International Internship Uni University, IIU. This university is committed to providing better and virtual education to all the to all the young learners of the globe through quality training programs and experienced trainers. Now I take this opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Alok Kumar. I am a speaker, corporate trainer, NLP practitioner, and IAS coach. I have been training in different corporates and to individuals also for the last two decades. I make sure that uh, in my entire training is in the form of a storytelling. I love sharing story with you. And uh, human potential, human mind, soft skills, and public speaking is my forte. I love to talk about this. So together you and I will enjoy to, uh, today. And just give me a moment so that I can bring my PPT. Just give me a moment. I hope my PPT is visible. Is my PPT visible? Can Okay, I can see thumbs up sign, fine. So today the topic is human potential. And wherever you are sitting, sit straight on the chair and keep a smile on your face. This is a very important topic. And let me begin this about human potential by talking about the two players. Can you see here Romelu Lukaku and Rani Rampal? And there is a reason why I am talking to you about these two players. They were born in a very humble family. Romelu Lakokoku had, you know, such a poverty-stricken childhood that his mother used to mix water in milk. And that is what his food was. There is a similarity with Rani Rampal. She was the captain of the Indian hockey team. She also came from a very poor family. And she had also, you know, this is the same story. The, uh, she also mixed what, water in the mi milk in the uh, water in the milk, and the upbringing was in poverty. But there is one thing common. They were very clear about what they want to achieve in life. They never gave up. They also faced hard hurdle. Both of them faced hurdle, and there are many people like them but they have become, and they have become champions. So what is there that some people become champion and some people lead a mediocre life? We will examine that. We will understand today what is human potential and what do I do to polish my human potential? Everybody is full of potential, let me tell you, without any exception. But that's not the exciting news. The exciting news is that we have the opportunity to realize our potential. And most of us, or even many of us, we are not able to realize that full potential. So is that interesting? Exciting? We'll go ahead. So this is the question what I have asked you just now. How come certain people are super successful? Why the majority of people lead a mediocre life? So I guess this is a very interesting question and we'll go ahead and see. You see, outcome is a result of attitude and hard work. Clear goal. And point number three, attitude of never giving up. Now, what is that attitude? This we will examine in detail and 
hard work you know without perseverance conquers everything without hard work nothing happens in life but before you start doing hard work you must know what your goal is what do you want to become in life if i ask 100 people today that what is their goal or what do they want to become which looks a very simple question but it has a tendency to confuse people you will find most people are not sure of what they want to become and that becomes a cause of disaster you may feel right now oh goal we have heard left several times but this is a crux of the issue in case of romelu or in case of uh, the hockey player i just now talked about rani rampal they had a clear cut goal and that is what is a decisive factor in realizing your potential and it will not happen that life will be a cake walk there will be challenges in life and here the attitude of never giving up that is important if suppose if i get uh, set back today and i take a back seat it won't work so there should be always hope and then we should fight we are normally not defeated and this is a very important sentence hear me out we are not defeated by circumstances by any kind of situation we are defeated by ourselves and i give you a guarantee if you don't give up you will become successful that is it and i have seen umpteen number of people becoming super successful when they have not given up so you know the best examples are athletes the way they fight and i will give you an example of uh, one indian cricketer sachin tendulkar or right now currently is playing virat kohli these two batsmen at normally they don't give up no matter what happens sachin tendulkar has never given up he is considered to be god of cricket but that has happened because of the attitude of never giving up we will go ahead and we will see what stops us and what makes us shine so now i have discussed so much i have given you example so what is human potential that is the question and the answer is interesting i want you to see the answer human potential we are all endowed with limited and limitless wisdom courage and compassion that is potential and when we work on our potential we tend to become what we want to become so we are born with unlimited wisdom courage and compassion i am sure that this point is clear with you this is the potential inside us now it is our responsibility to to polish it further make it shine further all right as we go ahead you will find very interesting points over here now here it's very important direction is more important than speed in my childhood or when i was growing up i always believed that if i run very fast if i do something with great intensity with great speed i will become victorious but one day one of my mentors met me and he guided me he said alok unless you don't know in which direction you have to run speed is useless it won't happen so my potential needs direction i have i am already very rich all human beings are very rich but if there is no direction it becomes a useless exercise you need to give that direction now i have come to a very very important topic it says instant gratification is the poison of life what does it mean you know we all are victim of our moods let's say i need to read a book that's very important prepare ppt for presentation 
but suddenly i have a you know immediately i have a desire okay let's have a cappuccino with my friend and i waste my two hours in that process now instant gratification is a quality or a tendency which separates a normal person from the champion when i become a victim of instant gratification i sacrifice my long term good and i do what is required to do right now so instant gratification means i am not looking at my long term goal i am doing what i feel that i should do right now whether it is in my interest or it is not in my interest i want to examine your own life and check how powerfully instant gratification is working in your life we all are victim of it but then when we read it again and again we make it a point to write it in our notebook or type it on our laptop and read it again and again that instant gratification is the poison of life we realize where we are making mistake remember very closely connected with this point is that we are ruled by the principle of pleasure and pain we do those activities which give us tremendous amount of pleasure and anything which gives us pain even if it is beneficial in long run we try to avoid it so the primary cause for instant gratification is the principle of pain and pleasure let's say there is a student who has to prepare for the exam he should study and you know he find that certain children are playing outside or he wants to play video games now that video games is giving him instant pleasure if he will not prepare for the exam that will go against him but our mind is governed by instant gratification you know in our life what is most important thing functioning of our mind and how do i control it this is my mind okay now we work mostly in below our mind area we buy good cars nice house jewelry jewelries why we do that we do it more for our body but we don't try to upgrade our mind and that is a problem all right interesting so we have to take care keep okay, that we should not become a victim of instant gratification now a more fatty i love my destiny what does it mean this means now you see what we are discussing the topic is that how do i polish my potential now what is amur fatty that i love my destiny meaning thereby whatever is happening good bad ugly which you feel from outside is actually helping in my growth that is the point instead of cribbing complaining that this has happened with me i have suffered loss the a partner of mine has betrayed me i am not very lucky instead of saying all this you love your destiny i'll give you an example of thomas edison which you may have heard but it will excite you hear me out carefully thomas edison one day he was eating his dinner and somebody came and informed him that his factory has caught fire so when i say factory i mean the place where he was doing a lot of experiment experiments when thomas edison heard this he told his son ask your mother to come his son thought that his father has lost his sanity so he was quite surprised but then he called his mother anyway and thomas edison told his wife can you see the wonderful fire this fire work you may not see again in life and let me tell you lot of paper 
documents, research work of Thomas Edison had burned. But Thomas Edison did not complain. In fact, he went ahead and rebuilt everything and that too at the age of late 60s. He was 65 or 67 years. The point I'm trying to drive home that if you want to realize your full potential, love whatever is happening in your life, instead of complaining about it, enjoy the journey. Let people tell you this is a mishappening or failure in your life. It doesn't matter. You can always bounce back. That resilience is required. And the moment you change your perspective, your life will change. So it's very important that I love my destiny. Amur Fati, that's important. I hope you are you're enjoying this point. This is a very important point. All right, next is again reinventing. I have a question to you and you can think about, think uh, the answer of this question. When you go and buy, when you go to the uh, med, uh, pharmaceutical shop or a chemist shop and you buy medicine, what do you check? Your answer will be obviously that you check the expiry date. So we human beings also have the expiry date. The way we have led our life 10 years ago and the way we are leading our life today, that has to undergo a massive change. When I address students, I tell them the way you have done your 10th, you will not do your 12th in the same manner. And the way you have done your 12th, you will not do your graduation in the same manner. And if you do any further higher education, you will constantly keep upgrading yourself. So that is very important. Reinventing every time you have to bring a transformation within yourself consciously. That's reinventing. You need to upgrade yourself. You go and attend different training programs, seminars, and talk to a lot of successful people so that you keep on reinventing continuously changing, learning, unlearning, relearning is all the process of reinventing. So if I don't reinvent myself, I become redundant in my life. So reinventing is one of the keys of success. So not only medicines have the expiry dates, we human beings also have the expiry date. So let's consciously reinvent ourselves after every short period of time. You know, in life, if you don't move forward, you move backward. There's nothing called status quo. That's important. Okay? So reinventing is important. Okay, fine. Language. Why am I talking about language? So let me tell you a story. And this story was, uh, you know, uh, viral also recently. A mother and a young daughter was walking together. Hear the story. This is a very nice story. Walking together in the ground, in the park. The girl was holding a balloon, right? Suddenly, a strong gust of wind came and the balloon flew. The girl missed the, uh, the control was not there and she, finally the balloon went in the air. The writer of the story who shared the story was watching from the distance. He thought that the girl would scream, will cry, but instead that the girl said, wow, how wonderful. Now, the writer of the story did not realize at that point of time, but he had understood, but he had learned something indirectly. Later on that, the later, uh, later on, when the writer was sitting in his office, a client called up and, and complained about certain things. Then the writer, instead of saying, oh no, the problem has come again, he said, wow, Wonderful, how can I help you? And then this writer realized 
that instead of saying, oh no, the problem has come again. It's better to say, wow, amazing, wonderful. Point I'm trying to tell you, watch your language. For instance, if I tell you, it seems that you have a strong headache. And if I keep telling this after 10 minutes, you will really have a headache in your mind. Language is important. When you use powerful language, you become powerful. Let me repeat, when you use a powerful language, you become a powerful human being. Now, when I learned this story, and then what you know, what I do every day, when I am about to sleep, I say, wow, it was a wonderful day. When I get up in the morning, I say, wow, amazing. What a wonderful day it's going to be. And in the afternoon, I also say, oh, wow, wonderful. When I came for this webinar, I told myself, wow, what a wonderful opportunity. So your language matters. Instead of using the language, you know, which is... Uh, about complaining, cribbing, talk, you know, use powerful language. And this language is utterly, utterly important. I can guarantee you that your perspective of life will change if you use powerful language. Keep saying it's an amazing opportunity. Every time you get problems, and now here, what I'm going to tell you, instead of calling a problem, a problem, call the problem opportunity. So let's say you have five problems and instead you say, I have got five opportunities today. How will you feel? You will feel amazing. Just try it. Don't say, oh, it's very difficult. How can I do it? It's unfortunate remove this language from your dictionary. That's important. Appreciate everything. That's very, very important. And you know, once you start appreciating and your language becomes powerful, powerful chemicals are released in your body. And that is beautiful thing. So my language shapes my reality. And this is the topic I love to talk about it. Let's say together, wow, it's a great life. Wow, it's an amazing interaction. See how do you feel it? You know, it's very important in life to be enthusiastic. And in order to be enthusiastic, your language has to be powerful. And of course, you need to be curious also. If you will be curious, you will learn many things. That's important. Okay. Very closely related with languages. The kind of questions you ask. You know what happens in certain parts of the uh, globe, in certain countries, there are there is a stress on writing good answers. But I will tell you, if you start asking good questions, good answer will be the byproduct. I have got a collection of 5,000 books. How do I read? Is it possible to read it every time, page by page? No. I ask, when I see the topic, I ask myself various questions and I jot it down. And then when I read particular topic, particular chapter, it becomes easy for me to understand. This is one benefit. Secondly, in life, whatever is happening, after you say, wow, it's wonderful, ask a few questions and you will get the answer. All right. Don't always try to answer it. First, ask questions and the answer will come. Right? It's very important to ask question. And I love this quote of Peter Drucker, who said that difference between the Nobel Prize winner and normal person is only one. The Nobel Prize winner asks bigger and better questions. So learn to ask questions and use powerful language. Okay, we'll go further. All right. You know, we human beings have four muscles. Appreciation muscle, 
character muscle, psychological safety muscle, change muscle. What is appreciation mus muscle? Appreciate people, appreciate situation. Look at the blessings of everything. And what happens when that happens, your vibration changes, your inner feeling changes, and that magnetic energy is there. Then we have character muscle. What is character? We do something even when nobody is observing us. When you are a person of strong character, this builds intrinsic strength. You understand yourself better and it also breeds empathy. We will talk about empathy as we come across. So character muscle is very important. It's important that you become a man of strong character, which means that I will do right things even when nobody is observing me. Fine. Okay. Then we have a psychological safety muscle. What is this psychological safety muscle? It means that the place where we are, where I am working is a safe zone. People feel safe with me. I also feel safe with myself. You know, there I don't perceive a situation to be a serious threat, or I'm in a constantly in a sense of you know uh, there is a competition. I uh, I know this world is an abundant place, and there's a place of everybody. So when I am working in a psychologically zone place, I'm able to build a better team, and I'm able to work more effectively. Then. Change muscle is required in order to become. We have talked about it briefly when I was speaking to you about reinventing. But remember, in order to be successful, you do not have to be the biggest. You do not have to be the tallest. You do not have to be the wisest. You do not have to be the brilliant. You need to take action despite fear. Action brings clarity in action creates confusion. Let me repeat. Action brings clarity. Inaction breeds confusion. All right. So this is, so we need to develop these four muscles no matter what. And if we do this, I will be able to realize my potential in a much, much better way. And we go ahead. What is brain betrayal? You know, I was a couple of years ago in Vietnam and I had a wonderful trainer from Singapore who talked about brain betrayal. He said that even in the younger age also, when he wanted to transform his life, achieve certain level of success, he could not do it. And whenever he wanted to do it, what happened? There was a access denied protocol, something like uh, 